Okay, so I want to talk about a couple key concepts, and these are issues that I learned about maybe 20, 25 years ago, and I found them to be absolutely essential for my life, really relevant and, and very important in, I guess, my own growth and development as a person. And I, I encourage people, when they're listening to these concepts, to very carefully try to discern what is being said and see if what is being said is actually what you're hearing. And that's probably one of the key issues in what we're talking about here. But the, okay, so the, the key concepts uh, are, are going to be talked about in terms of influence and enterprise. That's what I want to talk about, this issue of influence and enterprise. How can one understand the nature of influence and enterprise, how those dynamics work, in such a way as to either ensure the likely success of one's enterprise or to, to minimize the possibility of failure? You know, how could one learn to understand the nature of influence and the nature of enterprise such that you know, one, one could just ensure the success of one's enterprise. And now what's so interesting is when I talk about this issue, and I've taught some of the some of these concepts, I guess, in various classes. Just recently I taught a special topics course where we talked a lot about it, and a lot of this comes from the work of Lee Thayer. And when people first hear it, as they're listening to it, it's as if I'm saying one thing and they hear something else. That w when I'm speaking about influence and enterprise, it's, it's so often the case that people hear something like, how do I learn to be influential upon other people? How can I so learn to strategically design some kind of enterprise that I could get people to do my bidding? People imagine, when they even hear the expression, they imagine something like being influential and influencing other people and making a powerful enterprise by way of this, again, exertion of power strategically upon others. And it almost couldn't be further from the case. Now, okay, Admittedly, some of those kinds of dynamics may come into play way later in the game, and we don't want to ignore those factors, and that's partly why people think that way, is because they see highly influential, powerful people who look like they have somewhat successful enterprises, at least from the outside, and because of that, I think those are where those assumptions come from, right? When people hear other people talk about it, they... They fill in the gaps in that way, but really to their own detriment. Okay, The way to understand influence and enterprise, uh, I would recommend for people, is, okay, first off, if you knew the difference between good advice and bad advice, you wouldn't need any advice. And so maybe you don't want to take advice from anyone who isn't doing better than you. And so maybe right now you just want to turn this video off and go, you know, this guy isn't doing any better than I am. Why would I want to take his advice? Um, maybe you do. Well, then you, you're going to have to decide for yourself. Okay. The, the issues are not how do I influence other people, but how do I learn when and where I'm being influenced? See, the question of how do I take the world into account and who exactly has already influenced me, who is influencing me, and to what ends are the kinds of influence that I'm currently, I guess, being under or that, that I'm aligned with. Now, a different way to say some of this is to say that each person is an enterprise and you're nestled in to a set of relations with all kinds of other enterprises. Now, some of those enterprises are other people. Some are larger institutions. They could be governmental bodies. They could be corporations. They could be just family units, more largely construed. But enterprises are designed in just such a way that they're mutually interdependent and that the success of some enterprises depends upon the success of other enterprises, just as the success of some enterprises depends upon the failures of others. And you want to ask yourself right now, who are the stakeholders in your enterprise? 
See, right now, whether you realize you have an enterprise or not, you already do. You have an enterprise because other people have already taken you and have made you stakeholders in their enterprise. And that's, I guess, how we emerge. We emerge in some nested relation of being stakeholders in some people's enterprise, whether that's serving our best interests or not, and other people being stakeholders in our enterprise, whether that's serving our best interest or not. And then the key question becomes, well, what do I want to be when I grow up? What do I want out of life? What do I think the world best needs? What, what kind of enterprise ought I have? And then from there, one can start asking the question of who should I let influence me? How can I learn to be influenced by those people who would be the best kinds of stakeholders in my enterprise? Right? See, <clears throat> it's, it's sort of like, you know, we, I don't know how I say it, that we, we, you know, t t take, take parents, maybe they're the simplest example. You know, I think we're going to say that a good parent is someone who ensures the success of the child. And a successful child means that that was a good parent. That is, we, we want to say, in some, say, some sense, well, how do you know that a parent was a good parent? Well, if the child turns out good, we in some way say that that was good parenting. All right? that, that is, there seems to be an interlocking relationship between parent and child so that the success of the enterprise of being a good parent is to ensure the success of your child. And the more successful the child is, we say, wow, those parents should be very proud. Now, I'm not suggesting that there isn't a lot, um, I guess, to be said in terms of that person I guess owning the responsibility, shaping themselves in certain ways, cutting off certain influences. See, this is where excommunication becomes such a crucial issue. In, you know, in today's world, we live with such, I guess, such a talk about connectivity and being hooked in and linked to everyone and how everyone's networked and all this kind of stuff. But we're underassessing the importance of excommunication. That if you want to stimulate growth and change and you want to create a kind of signature to your mind, you have to make sure that you're not pulling your ideas just off the rack or that you're not being so connected to everyone that you're letting people get mind share who have a kind of vested interest in your failure. Now take those those wily advertisers who sell the rock gut cereal and the glow-in-the-dark, crunchy chips, you know, do, do these people really have a vested interest in your success? Now, you might say, yeah, I'm happy eating this crap, you know, that good stuff, it makes me feel good. Well, maybe you have become a stakeholder in an enterprise, and you're helping to ensure the success of that enterprise, but that enterprise, if successful, will lead to your demise, or lead to some drawbacks in your own enterprise. See, the, again, the question isn't how do I influence others, it's how can I learn to be influenced by those others who have the most power to serve my own best interests. And then, once we get really good at that, then maybe you can ask this larger question of how do I get others to see that my enterprise is basically in the vested interest of securing the success of their enterprise. So you, you want to ideally design an enterprise that other people realize is in their best interest, right? Now, you know, I sort of picked on rock guts here. Maybe some person has a really great product. Maybe some entrepreneur, some designing mind comes up with some problem-solving technology and it maybe it's a medicine 
you know, these are the kind of things where I think we're going to say, look, th this is where a person in trying to further their enterprise maybe advocates people, you know, use this technology, use this, this product, and maybe there is a vested interest that people have in, in the product. I mean, I think that's the ideal case. But the, the problem is that so many people they begin with the issue of how do I influence other people? They've never really thought about how they're already being influenced. They're not asking who are they currently a stakeholder in? Whose enterprise? Who is a stakeholder in their enterprise? And the various stakeholders, are they, do they have a vested interest in your success or your failure? All of which presupposes that you really have a sense of where you want to end up and what you want to do with your life, where you want to be, uh, say, in 10 years from now. Okay, thanks. Love to talk more about this, so let me know. Thanks.